Today down in the comments, I want to hear about your best theatrical experience seeing a movie. And I do not mean the best movie you've seen in theaters. We've all seen great movies. I just mean uh, a special time. Either it's a retrospective screening of something you didn't think you'd get to see, or uh, the director or actor was in attendance, or something really weird or funny happened with the audience, or everyone was just having a good time. Uh, I want to hear about those stories. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new or a reissue horror movie, and then we give you a book recommendation for a piece of horror literature that you'll enjoy if you like that movie. If you want to see more videos like this, I've got plenty more on my channel. Uh, go check it out. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you really want to be spicy, you can hit the little bell to be notified when I put new videos up, which is usually every week. And today, uh, mothers, tell your children we are talking about Veronica, uh, the new film uh, from Misfits, uh, Sam Hain, Danzig, uh, frontman, uh, Glenn Danzig. He wrote, directed, did some of the music, and produced this film. And it is a very singular vision because it is based off of his uh, Veronica comic books. It's an anthology film. You may have heard of this movie already. You may have heard uh, conflicting things. And you may have seen uh, when it first screened, it screened at, uh, the, screened at Stitches, and it also screened at the uh, Cinepocalypse uh, film festival, and that, that kind of became like a notorious screening uh, because I think it was the opening night film, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm mythologizing there, and uh, the next day there were like all these think pieces and all these articles about how this is the next The Room, this is the next So Bad It's Good uh, movie, and I'm gonna stop doing air quotes, but I'll put the emphasis where it needs to be, but that this is the next kind of So Bad It's Good classic, and um, I'm gonna say uh, I highly disagree, and not for the reasons that you may think. Blu-ray is not my first time um, seeing this film, and it's a Blu-ray and a DVD, and it comes with a soundtrack CD, so this thing has three discs in it. A few months ago in Philly, uh, Danzig himself came and did a, a kind of introduction and then a uh, fan Q&A after screening of the film, and that was, uh, according to the distributor, that was the last time the movie was going to be uh, shown. They'd done kind of a, almost a road show where they, they brought the movie around. Danzig fans came out, of course, because you, know, you really want to see the man himself talk about the movie. Uh, but this was, bar none, uh, probably the best theatrical experience I can imagine. Not only was it great because uh, I'm a fan of uh, Mr. Danzig's music, and he was there, um, but the screening and the atmosphere, the way to see this movie is to see it with a crowd. Um, to say so bad it's good, I'm not, uh, I enjoy The Room. I've had, I've had a laugh watching The Room with friends. Um, I enjoy a lot of other films that are considered, uh, in that kind of subgenre. I'm a big fan of, uh, Ed Wood and, and things like Neil Breen and, uh, there is a an enjoyment that can be had at a film's expense, but I do not think that Veronica works on quite that same level, or at least for me, it doesn't work on quite that same level. Uh, because the thing about Veronica is, um, as uh, idiosyncratic and weird and at times um, baffling in its construction and acting and production and Editing, editing especially, there's these weird <laughs> fade outs in between scenes, in, in between cuts that just make no sense. Um, beneath all of that, beneath the, the yes, technical problems maybe this film has, uh, I would call them quirks, I would call them, um, you know, uh, even diamonds have imperfections, uh, th there is something uh, undeniably ambitious and weirdly good-natured uh, about Veronica because it does seem like such a singular uh, production. It does seem like this is, for better or for worse, or for really worse, uh, the film that Glenn Danzig wanted to make. And it does not seem like he was fettered in any way, shape, or form at all. It does not seem like uh, he was told no a lot. And that's what makes this movie special because it is, it is, you want to talk about 
auteur theory and you want to talk about outsider art, you want to talk about art, um, you know, clearly he's not an outsider artist. He's, he's a, a very accomplished uh, professional musician. Uh, but as far as filmmaking goes, this is his first film. It, he is adapting uh, something that he had a hand in making and adapting it fairly faithfully. He kind of takes a the structure of an amicus anthology or something like that. Like it, it has it has a a brief introduction where we meet our kind of crypt keeper character Morella, played by Caden Cross. Um, she's torturing a woman, and then she just tells you that this is Veronica, uh, and then the first story starts, and it's three segments, and the first one is about uh, a woman who's uh, considered a freak by some, and her tears create this kind of avenging angel uh, who's gonna, while she sleeps, is gonna go on a killing rampage. Um, the second story, a uh, serial killer who takes faces, and the investigation to find them, uh, and then the third story is uh, Countess Elizabeth Bathory pastiche or, or, or riff, um, and that is a period piece. So we've got these two kind of, kind of set in modern times, one set in France, uh, stories, and then we have a period piece to end it all with like horses and stuff. Um, but again, ambitious, ambitious, ambitious uh, movie made, uh, it would seem on a shoestring, I don't know, there's just something about this movie and I really did think after the screening and having such a great time at the screening and kind of uh, laughing and vibing with the movie and the audience was was at times annoying trying to do like the Mystery Science 3000 kind of thing, which is like the movie speaking for itself, just shut up. Um, but it's still just such a great atmosphere and such a great mood uh, and to see Dancing come out at the end and this couldn't be what he'd anticipated the reaction to his like really hardcore, really gory, really sexy, again, quotes, air quotes for everything, <laughs> movie. But he he seemed really heartened and touched that people enjoyed the film and was very much like, no, this is, the reaction that you have is exactly the reaction I wanted you to have. Um, and, and, and maybe it is. Uh, maybe this is, he's doing a bit, but then he talks about Jean Cacto, uh, Biet Albet, and, uh, and, 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 and the French New Wave, and all the different influences that uh, Italian film and French film and uh, European cinema had on him, and, and then you, and then you kind of think back to what he's talking about, and you're like, I guess, and you're thinking of the movie, and you're like, I guess, but it, it doesn't matter, because it's, you have such a good, visceral, fun time, because it's so unexpected, and it's so weird, and I, I kind of was like, should I get the disc? Because if I watch the, watch this at home by myself, is this going to replicate uh, the experience of seeing this movie for the first time? And the, the truth is, you can't replicate that. You can't replicate the, the crowd. But if you get a few friends over, not maybe not right now because we're social distancing, but if you, um, if, you're, if, you, if you watch this film, I can't tell you enough about it so that you'll know what to expect. Um, you're gonna have a good time because I was the, the movie started and I already was like, I was giggling at the at the, some something in the title credits. Like it's 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 still an enjoyable, infectious, wild movie. And I have in the past, not with the book recommendations, because every book recommendation I give you guys is absolute solid gold. Uh, but uh, with some of my film recommendations, I have given the caveat of this might be an acquired taste or this might not be for you, if you're not down to roll with something really weird. And I've never had to give a big enough asterisk uh, to a movie than this is, look, at, look into it at least a little bit more, watch a trailer, realize if this is not something you wanna watch, this is not for you. But for like-minded people, for folks like myself who enjoy uh, this kind of thing, uh, it's, it's, it's a hoot and a half and I really cannot recommend it enough to those people. And I will say, what I usually do is I usually put down in the description, I usually put like an Amazon affiliate link uh, and, and most times I do say uh, support our friends at Diabolic DVD because they're selling it too. Um, but for this movie, I will say, and for uh, all your movies for the foreseeable future, I know um, it's a tough time right now and I know that uh, a lot of folks are very trained to just, if you want something, you just click on Amazon and go get it. Um, there's a lot of small businesses right now that could use patronage. I know my friend uh, Matt uses Bull Moose up in, uh, up in the Boston, New England area. Here in Philly we have Diabolic DVD. Uh, they are uh, so far uh, well stocked with Veronica DVDs and Blu-rays. 
uh, with all other kinds of uh, cult movies. If you haven't used them before, uh, I 110% vouch for them. They ship fast, uh, they ship cheap, and uh, a lot of times if you look at their prices, especially in some of the weirder stuff, and they do a lot of imports and region B and all region, if you look at their prices, uh, they can't be beat, not even by Amazon. So for this movie, and again, for the foreseeable future, I would say if you're gonna buy uh, cult cinema, horror, uh, Blu-rays or DVDs, uh, definitely consider supporting Diabolic DVD, and I will put the link for this specific movie down in the description. Uh, you can go pick it up for them. And uh, yeah, they're great guys. This week's book recommendation is The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson. Now this is a very recent book, this just came out. And I actually, I did the uh, audiobook for this, so uh, your mileage may vary on the Kindle uh, or on the uh, paperback. I think it's a paperback, maybe it's a hardcover. Uh, but uh, this Andy Davidson, uh, I, a year ago now, maybe even more than that, I had talked about his, um, his West, Western uh, vampire novel, uh, The Valley of the Sun, which I thought was great. Uh, his second book now, his second novel, is called The Boatman's Daughter, and I described it to a friend as Guillermo del Toro's Choir of Ill Children. And if you've read Choir of Ill Children by Tom Piccarelli, it is one of the best Southern Gothic horror novels around. If it's like kind of the, the the big, shining pillar of the genre that I I, I would hold up. Um, this is kind of like that. Uh, but this Valley of the Sun was great. I thought it was a fantastic book. Uh, the Boatman's Daughter is even better. It is it is it is blow away good. This is one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. One of the best uh, Southern Gothic horror novels. Um, I've ever read and I really enjoy that that genre and those stories um, man it's really really good it's uh, it's a multi part story multi perspective story um, but it's it, it mostly has to do uh, with the, the boatman's daughter this, uh, this young woman um, she's kind of almost like a survivalist she can use a bow and arrow she's uh, adopted a kind of um, fish boy and raised him, raised him as his own. Uh, she lives with a witch, like a Baba Yaga. Um, she's trying to kind of get out from under uh, the really bad dudes that run this town. And there's all these other side characters and they're all very interesting and all really well drawn. And it's one of those books where you're like, you're reading it or you're listening to it and you just kind of, you know, especially because this just came out and it's kind of making a little bit of a splash, you know this is going to be a movie eventually. It, it, it feels so um, rich and the characters feel so like jumping off the page uh, which isn't to say that it's cinematic writing it doesn't seem like you're reading a screenplay um, Davidson in the Valley of the Sun I was like wow this edge is really close to being a little too much for me a little too you know pretty in its prose um, but the Bowman's Daughter is 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 a fabulously written book uh, it has it has some great lines uh, and it's and it's really really expertly written and really beautiful. Um, I think there are authors that try this style of this kind of high-handed style uh, and completely whiff, completely show uh, their shortcomings as a writer because they can't hack it. They can't string a sentence together like that. Uh, but D Davidson is, is, is a fantastic writer and it's so good. Uh, I really, really recommend this book. I usually don't make the book recommendations this long or this effusive, but I'm doing it here because I think kind of everyone it's for if Veronica is just for like a quarter of you less than a quarter of you uh this book is for everyone this is something that everyone who watches this channel everyone who reads horror fiction will enjoy be good to one another uh stay safe out there stay socially distant uh, I'm always emotionally distant but now I'm socially distant uh if you want to support me check out my books pre-order clown in the cornfield uh, my new slasher comes out in August. Uh, Clive Barker uh, blurbed it. It's gonna be great, guys. Uh, but ebooks, if you're watching this, um, and if you're watching all the way to the end, if you're watching this within the next few days, they're actually all on sale now. They're all they're all really really cheap. My ebooks. So stay inside, get some reading, enjoy, and I will see you next week.